Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Martin with The Grass Factor. And now that we are transitioning out of winter into late winter and then into spring, one of the major things I get asked about is Poa trivialis. You can have a beautiful green lawn with these light green clumps that form in it. Boa annua and Poa trivialis are one of the most difficult weeds to control in cool season grasses. So today I wanted to give you the five best management strategies possible to manage Poa annua and Poa trivialis in cool season grass. Number one, ethofumosate is the active ingredient. Ethofumosate is an herbicide that is translocated throughout the plant after being root absorbed. The highest concentration is going to exist in the sheaths right near the crown. What's interesting about this herbicide is that once it is absorbed into the plant, it does not transport out of the plant until it degrades. The label recommendation is typically going to be two to three applications. This can be done as part of a fall pre-emergent strategy, and this would fall into a pre-emergent and post-emergent strategy. However, it can also be performed in the spring as well. Rates vary, but University of Arizona did a comprehensive study and found that three pounds of active ingredient per acre had the highest rate of efficacy. Control levels with ethofumosate are widely regarded as acceptable, but not consistent. One thing to keep in mind is that with it being root absorbed, you will get your best performance on post-emergent activity when the plants are actively growing. Ethofumosate does not show strong action on Poa trivialis. So this herbicide will be for Poa annua alone. Number two, mesotrione, also known as tenacity. Tenacity or mesotrione is an HPPD inhibitor. What this means is that it is a bleacher of weeds that are affected by this herbicide. They will become bleached, meaning they turn white. This whitening of the leaves is an indicator of the interruption of photosynthesis, which ultimately can cause the plant to fail. Rates vary relatively widely regarding the herbicide, and they may range anywhere from 4 ounces per acre all the way up to 8 ounces per acre. Keep in mind, wherever you're spraying, you may have a different limit on what your rate may be. Uh, sports turf and sod production may have a higher legal label rate than, say, residential lawns. Typically, this product is going to be used pre-emergently, and it begins at the time of seeding and then applied every two to four weeks afterwards. One of the bigger studies that was performed showed that four applications would reduce coverage from 65% down to 28%. Three applications reduce coverage from 65% to roughly 35%. And only two applications saw a reduction of 65% down to 48%. Mesotrione is widely accepted as inconsistent and marginal control depending on the location and the time of year. Mesotrione is generally regarded as having mild to no action on Poa trivialis. When we look at a product like mesotrione, I think it's important that we take in mind with those levels of control, this product is more for suppression and not truly a control product. Number three, amacarbazone, also known as exonerate. Amacarbazone is a triazinon herbicide. This puts it into the same class of herbicides as simazine or metribuzin or atrazine. However, it is primarily for cool season turf. One of the interesting notes on the label is that this should be applied in the spring when it's warm and POA is actively growing. However, one note is that if your daytime temperatures are going to exceed 85 degrees, do not apply it. Most herbicides will give you a recommendation based on what the temperature is at time of application. However, amicarbazone specifically states if air temperatures during that course of day 
the entirety of the day, not just your time of application, exceed 85. Do not apply. This is a product you want to avoid summer and early fall applications. Early trials with this product saw a general reduction in POA populations of around 15%. This would also place it into that category of offering marginal limited control. Even with POA Trivialis, this product, though labeled for it, still offers almost no control and action is widely regarded as moderate. Now, before we move on to number four, I want to make a couple of quick notes. There used to be a product on the market, Bisprac Sodium, known as Velocity, that was manufactured by Valent. It lost its label for residential turf, and ultimately, Valent ended up pulling the product off of the market. While effective on Poet Trivialis, it had very tight application windows and timing recommendations. Any variation or deviance from those ultimately resulted in reduced control or efficacy. Number four, experimental mixtures. It is generally widely accepted that increasing the number of modes of action in a tank mix will either increase efficacy or broaden the spectrum of control of all the herbicides that are combined in the tank. Remember, some of these materials may not work for you that may work for other people in other parts of the country in different climates. Remember, these may not work for you. This is something you have to make the determination whether or not it fits your budget and your overall goals for the property you are maintaining. Number five, I'm going to give you an experimental tank mix. Amicarbazone, Zonerate, combined with Sulfentrazone, or carfentrazone, or pyrofluffin ethyl. However, I prefer sulfentrazone and carfentrazone as I tend to get a bigger visual response. Acclaim, also known as phenoxaprop, trinaxapac ethyl, also known as TNAX, and mesotrione tenacity. This combination of multiple modes of actions, each product in and of itself having some action on POA, combined together may not necessarily probably, but may offer an increased level of control of any of them isolated as a single application. Specifically, this tank mix has been used before out in the field, and it did show some promising levels of control. However, again, I want to stress it may vary by location to location. Although this tank mix may be considered as good as we got, one thing to keep in mind is that it's extremely expensive. So even for lawn care operators in the uh, most flexible of budget type situations, for the level of guarantee you're going to get running this product, which is none, it may not be worth it to include it in your budget. Now, before I close this out, there's a couple other things I wanted to touch on. Denitroalanines, DNA herbicides. These are going to be our pre-emergence like prodiamine, pendimethylin, dithiapyr. While widely regarded as being a good defense against a very offensive weed, remember control from those herbicides are still only going to range in 60 to 90 percent categories. And even now with the amount of DNA herbicide resistant POA out in the field, you're seeing much, much lower rates of actual control using these herbicides. Another thing that makes it tricky when using DNA herbicides and POA control, especially in cool season grass, is timing that herbicide application after you seed. If you're in a region where you do not have to seed, or it may be a region where you could skip a year seeding depending on your turf density, turf density would be more important in the fall than applying this herbicide when it comes to POA management. So, if you find yourself in a position where you do have good density and you can insert this, it may be a good thing to do that if you have been battling Poa annua or Poa trivialis in the past. Now, one quick note about Poa trivialis. It is perennial, so once it is there, it will continue to return year after year until it is eliminated. There are non-selective options like diquat and glyphosate. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but for Poa annua and Poa trivialis, they don't work exceptionally well. 
Specifically, with POA Trivialis, applications made in the spring offered roughly 69% control. Midsummer applications, you saw a great decrease in efficacy with only 32% control. Late summer applications, early fall applications, you see that begin to increase. Again, still only about 42% control. The picture I'm trying to paint here is that if you do have uh, infestations of Poa annua or Poa trivialis, I would expect and budget for some portion of renovation and also expect and budget for that to be multiple years of renovation because even single application, uh, even single applications or multiple applications of Poa trivi- of glyphosate, Even single or multiple applications of glyphosate in cool season lawns is still not seeing 100% POA trivialis control. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something with these two extremely difficult to control weeds. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to get to them in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good one.